Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you guys can tell by the title, I'll be telling you guys all about the books I read in 2022. My goal this year was to read 25 books and I ended up reading 40. So you can say it was a pretty good reading year number wise, quality wise. That's a different story, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But I do want to say in this video, I'm not really going to be going into depth with what the books are about and stuff like that. I'm just I'm just going to be quickly telling you guys my thoughts on these books because we have a lot to go through. And I will not be talking about the books that I have marked that I read for school. But if you are interested in what I had to read for school, you can go follow my Goodreads, which will always be linked down below. Let's get right into the video. So the first book I read was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is by... Talia Hibbert. I gave this a three out of five stars. I just thought it was okay. It didn't stand out to me. I did love that there was a black MC, but I just wasn't the biggest fan of the storyline or the love interest. The next book I read was November 9 by Colleen Hoover. This was a five out of five star read for me. I absolutely love this. I know this is controversial, but Ben is a top 10 book boyfriend for me personally. I just loved everything about this book. I know a lot of people say it's unrealistic because like they meet up once a year on November 9th and like they don't talk in between which is like that is very unrealistic but you have to lean into it and if you do it is really fun and a great read. The next book I read was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. This was another five star read for me. I have love on the brain. I don't know if you can see it on my TBR card and I cannot wait to read it. I love this book so much. Them two as a couple chef's kiss i loved the science talk i loved adam it was excellent if you are thinking about reading this book in 2023 take this as your sign to read it the next book i read was it ends with us by colleen hoover this was a another five star read it was really good i got through it very fast paced if you do want to read this for sure look into the trigger warnings it does deal with heavy topics such as domestic abuse but i love this book so much and i really cannot wait to read the second book it starts with us which again i have on my tbr card i do think this is a book that everybody should read now my next two reads i do not have a physical copy of so i'll put them on the screen but they were the sweetest oblivion and the maddest obsession they're both mafia romance books i think i gave them both a five star reads but honestly they i don't think about them often now so honestly would probably bump it lower like honestly like three stars i really liked them in the moment but they did not stand out at all i honestly forgot i read these so there's that and then other those two books i read all your perfects by colleen hoover as you can tell i was on my colleen hoover kick at the beginning of 2022 and this book i gave a three out of five stars i appreciated the then and now chapters and it was just crazy to see how they fell in love and then the now is like they're like on the brink of like divorce or whatever so it's very interesting to see like how it got up to that point but i just wasn't a fan of the girl character and i felt like a lot of issues could have been fixed a lot earlier and that both couples need therapy but obviously we wouldn't have a book if that was the case so but that was just my personal preference and then the next two books i read were part of a series i only have read the first two books so far but that would be the inheritance game and the hawthorne legacy i gave this book a four out of five and this book a 4.5 out of five these were really good i love them so much they were giving me major knives out vibes and that is like one of my top favorite movies of all time the subplot of romance is excellent all the mystery games and riddles are perfect and i just love everything about this um if you don't know this book is basically this rich guy ends up leaving this random girl avery his whole inheritance and just leaves his family with like barely anything and basically you're just trying to figure out like how did this happen what's the connection and it's really good and interesting i do have the third book on my cart somewhere if you can see and i really hope to read it before i go off to school next i read it happened one summer by tessa bailey this was a 4.75 out of 5. For me, this was a really good book. I read it at the perfect time. And I love the whole premise of it because it's like Piper is like the rich influencer social light who needs to learn the lesson, gets sent to a small town, and then she meets like a grumpy guy from the town, and then they fall in love. So I just love that plot line and like anything. And like I said, I read this at the perfect time because it was like spring, it was starting to warm up and this just really helped you get into that summery vibe. My only problem was I wish there was a little bit more time before they got together, before they ended up hooking up. But other than that, absolutely love this book. I need to read Hook, Line, and Sinker 
immediately. The next book I read, I did not have a physical copy of, but it was To Love Jason Thorne. I actually DNF'd this book at 61%. I was so disappointed because I really thought I was gonna love this book because it's like childhood friends to lovers and one of them is famous, one of them is not. And I was like, two tropes that I absolutely love, but I did not like it because the dialogue was very cringy to me, especially with the main female character. And there were like some very questionable scenes in this book that I was like, I do not think I'm gonna continue reading, but I can see why a lot of people love that book. But I personally would not recommend. The next book I read was One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I absolutely love her other books, The Seven Husbands and Malibu Rising. So, you know, of course, how to pick this up basically this is like a book about this woman and she marries her high school sweetheart and everything's like perfect but then he like goes out for work and ends up going like the helicopter he's in is like goes missing and he's declared dead and she ends up moving on with someone else but then years later she gets a call and figures out that oh he's actually not dead and that's not a spoiler it's all in the back of the book like that all what i just said happened at the beginning of the book and i gave this a four out of five stars i absolutely loved it i actually read it in a 24 hour reading challenge so i got through it like kind of quickly but kind of not but i really liked how love was portrayed in this book and how complicated it is like she was in love with two people and i could definitely relate on some of the topics emma felt when she was younger in terms of feeling like she doesn't belong and stuff like that but this was a pretty solid read and i would definitely recommend and it is supposed to be turned into a movie so i'm really excited to see how this plays out in movie format and then next i read the iconic people we meet on vacation by emily henry this was my second emily henry book i like this better than beach read comment down below which you like better like i said i like this better i gave this a five out of five stars and i think why is because i lowered my expectations before reading this book because it was so hyped up i was like you know i'm gonna see what it's about i'm not gonna expect too much and i was pleasantly surprised this is a friends to lover between poppy and alex and poppy is more outgoing and alex is more shy and reserved so it was really nice to see that dynamic switched and i just really enjoyed this so far and this is one of those books where it's like oh they went on these vacations year after year but then one summer something went wrong and then they don't talk for a couple years but then they end up in contact for some reason you'll find out why and then the whole book you're like so what happened and it was really good i love this book so much i have book lovers and i'm really excited to read that book and then the next three books i read were all part of a trilogy and that would be the to all the boys i loved before trilogy the first book is to all the boys i loved before obviously then p.s i still love you and then always and forever laura jean i think overall like these books are like a four stars for me the third was my favorite even though i rated it the lowest um but it was a pretty solid series i love the movies so i was like let me read the books and honestly these books kind of ruined the movies for me because these were so much better but we know we can't trust netflix with book and movie adaptations so it's whatever but i really like these i tap these a decent amount and I would definitely recommend and then I also started a very popular series on book talk and booktube which would be the addicted series and also the cat white sister series but technically that's a different series but I am personally reading it in the recommended reading order so I read the first two books in this recommended order which are part of the addicted series and that would be addicted to you and ricochet i gave this book five out of five this book a four out of five absolutely love these two books usually people hate this book but i absolutely loved it i got attached to the characters very quickly i know it was just very entertaining from the start basically this book or what this whole series is kind of going to be about at least in the beginning is lily and lo and lily's addicted to sex lo's addicted to alcohol and they're like fake dating to kind of cover up their issues from each other's families and it's really really good and i've never read about like addiction really in books so it was really nice to see the way it was written then this book is just a continuation of the story but if you want to know more about this series i would definitely recommend looking up videos of people like explaining it because they can do a way better job than i am doing right now but i do have the third book left to read and then i'll move on to the callaway sister series which is about lily's sisters daisy and rose and their love interest and it's just chef's kiss i'm already seeing the beginning of like the found family aspect and i absolutely love found family in books so i'm really excited and i really hope to 
read a lot more of this series in the new year. Next I read Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. I gave this a 3.5 just because the first half of this book was so slow like I had to like low-key like DNF this at one point because it was just so slow and it was taking me forever but then the last half of the book was amazing. It was very fast paced, loved the court scenes, loved seeing everything leading up to the murder it was just amazing and I love the movie as well. I think it was a really good adaptation in my opinion. But honestly getting through the first half was honestly kind of worth it for the second half. Um, I'm sure everyone who's watching this video has most likely read this book. But if not, I mean I would kind of recommend. But just know the first half is really really slow. Like extremely slow. Like I almost fully DNF this book. But I'm glad I did it. And I pushed through because the ending was all worth it. And then of course we all know in summer 2022 a very iconic show came out. The Summer I Turned Pretty. Millions were watching it. It blew up. People who weren't even readers were watching this show. It was so good and I was obsessed. And I obviously have known about the books for a while. But I was like mm, I don't know. But the show convinced me to read the books and... I devoured these three books in literally a week and I have a whole reading vlog if you want to know my in-depth thoughts but I read this whole trilogy. I gave these all the five stars. This is a five star series for me. I still think about this series to this day. So freaking good. If you haven't read it you need to read it now. They are so easy and quick to get through and so fast paced. The drama, the tea, so good. And it is a love triangle between brothers which kind of like turned me off at first but trust me it really is not that bad. And I know a lot of people have beef with the third book but I kind of defend it in my reading vlog. So if you really want to hear like my really like in detail thoughts really go watch that video. It's like one of my favorite videos on my channel right now. want to put everybody on. I tabbed it so much like look at that like this is for sure one of my top favorite reads from 2022 and if you're wondering i am team conrad comment down below if you're team conrad or team jeremiah and then next i read love in other words by christina lauren and so many people love this book but this was kind of a disappointment to me i gave it a three out of five stars it was just kind of meh to me and i didn't really like the female main character but i do see why people love this book it is a friends to lovers which and like childhood friends to lovers at that which i absolutely love but I know I didn't really like it in this book. If you're thinking about reading it, I would say check it out. But for me personally, it was just not for me. And then next I read Layla by Colleen Hoover, which I do not have a physical copy of. This was a Kindle read. I gave it a four out of five stars. It was definitely an interesting read. I've never read like a paranormal thriller romance book. And it was my first one and it's kind of different from what Colleen Hoover makes. She only has like one other thriller and that's Verity, which... I love that was like five out of five for me but this book was definitely interesting I don't think a lot of people like it but I was pretty intrigued there are lots of twists and turns I was making theories throughout of what happened and I just guessed them all wrong I'm really bad at that type of stuff I know other people were like I guessed it so early on I'm like did you really though but I just know they're just smarter than me but I think if you have an inkling of like mm, should I read this just check it out it was pretty good it kept me on my toes and it was a pretty fast read and then next I read funny you should ask by Alyssa Sussman and this was kind of like a disappointing read for me not gonna lie it was a 3.5 out of 5 and this was marketed on book talk it's like oh this is for the fanfic readers and the girlies who read on Wattpad and stuff so I was like oh wait that's literally me so let me check this out and this was i was expecting this to be like a five star read so maybe that was my issue but this felt really flat for me and this was like another one of those like second chance one of them is famous um the girl is a writer in this and basically the premise of this book is the main girl and gabe which is the love interest they did an interview in the beginning of his career that like really helped him and her and then 10 years later they kind of want to recreate that and on the original interview they kind of like really hit it off but you know nothing obviously happened and they're, they're just kind of rekindling that and so again i was like that sounds really interesting but it just fell flat for me i just thought a lot of the events in the story were kind of meh and i wasn't a big fan of the last couple chapters in the epilogue and the girl main character was like really annoying to me in the like now chapters and in the present so i was like ew i don't want to read about that <laughs> but i will say i did like the inclusion of like articles and stuff thrown in throughout that just makes the book seem even more like real and it was giving me the seven husbands of evelyn hugo vibes and that's one of my five star reads like favorite books of all time and then next i read the cruel prince by holly black which is the first book in the folk of the 
Air trilogy and I gave this a 4 out of 5 I really liked it it did take me forever to get through just because it was like my first fantasy book like getting back into reading as much as I am now but it was a pretty good book I really liked it had no complaints I will say I did go into this knowing that it is more of like a political fantasy book instead of like a fantasy romance which is how it was marketed a lot which there is like a little bit of a romance subplot but that's more in the later books i would say like the second book but really go into this not expecting romance for own and the political stuff in this is like really interesting to me so if you like that part of fantasy books then i would check this out but if not i probably wouldn't waste my time because you probably won't like this i still need to finish the series but i'll get more into that later and then after i read the first book i did read the novella in between which is the lost sisters honestly I could have just not read this. It was kind of a waste of time. It was just about Taryn, which is a character that no one likes, and it made me not like her even more. And I didn't even rate it. One, because it was so short, and two, because I, like, hated it. And then the next book I read was A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. This is another Kindle read. I was kind of, like, anticipating this to be, like, a high read. Not necessarily a 5 out of 5, but maybe, like, a 4 out of 5. And I DNF'd it at 32%. I absolutely hated it. And usually, I like to wait and give a book the until the 50% mark chance but I could not make it that far it was so bad a lot of people love it and honestly after reading the 32% I'm surprised but it just was not for me there are just a lot of questionable things done and said and I was like yeah I cannot sit here and read that I literally gave it a one star the next I read reminders of him by Colleen Hoover which I gave a five out of five stars it was so freaking good i honestly was very surprised by this book this wasn't even a book that i was like i want to read when it first came out but i just saw so many good things so i was like okay maybe i'll check it out and on a whim i did and ended up loving it i love that it kind of made you think about a different type of situation and it's really made you think like oh what would you do in this situation and just kind of taught you how to like not really judge i guess and i really loved ledger even though he's not really like someone i would go for in real life he was really like he was still a really great book boyfriend and him and Kenna are perfect together and there is a kid in this book which is like another reason why I was like mm, probably don't want to read this I don't really like reading about kids in books but I do not mind the kid at all in this book she was not really cringy at all and then next to continue my journey of reading fantasy I read the second book in the Folk of Air series, which is The Wicked King, I gave this a 5 out of 5. I liked this a lot better. It was really good. It did take me longer to read because, you know, school and stuff. But every time I, like, had time to read, I was just really lost in this world. It was so easy to get into and it was just so good. Like, not a single complaint. You do get more of the romance and even though it's very little, I ate it up and it was just so good. That ending was a little crazy though. I did not see that coming. I hope to read the third book before I go off to school, hopefully. But yeah, I really love The Wicked King. Definitely my favorite so far out of the two. And then next I read Icebreaker, which is a hockey romance between a ice skater and a hockey player. And I gave this a three out of five stars, which I'm kind of disappointed in because I thought it was going to be like a five out of five stars. Everyone loves it, but it just felt really flat for me. I will say it was a cute story, but again, very average. This book did have my attention until the characters got together. Like I just feel like it was a little slow paced at times, but then when I like got like up to speed, when I was like really interested and the last 30% of the book is honestly what kind of like saved this book from an even lower rating like I personally could have went without the epilogue and I honestly didn't see the point in one of the characters but I don't know that's just me but I will say I do see why people love this book and if you want to read it I would say check it out it just wasn't it for me next I read The Fine Print by Lauren Asher which is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaire series and I gave it a 4.75 I absolutely loved it I wasn't even planning to to read it when I did but I was just like you know whatever let's just read it devoured it I think it definitely lives up to all the hype Rowan was literally perfect and this is one of the best grumpy sunshine books that I've ever read and then next I read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan y'all this was a five star read for me I absolutely loved it I love the small town romance I love kind of like you know the shy boy and the more outgoing girl and I love how they both had trauma and they kind of like fixed through their own traumas and becoming their better selves while also coming together as a couple absolutely loved it small town vibes for everything I see why literally everyone loves this book like when it says a love story it really means that this 
is truly a love story it was so freaking good like archer and brie are literal soulmates i'm like if my love isn't like this if i don't have a man like archer then i don't want him and i got like a copy with like archer's pov from a certain chapter and the extended epilogue loved both of those like this book was everything i cannot express to you guys how much i love this book like you need to read this now i even recommended this to a friend who's like not a big romance reader i was like bro you would literally love this like it is so freaking good and then the second to last book i read this year was just a little christmas novella called the mistletoe bet by Marin moore i gave this a three out of five stars it was a pretty cute book i learned that i don't really like holiday books though but this was a cute read and then the last book i read of the year is another very popular like book talk book and that is normal people by sally rooney i gave this a four out of five stars I really liked it. I honestly did not think I was really gonna like this book, but I ended up actually really liking it. This book, I will say, is a lot different than I thought it was gonna be, and I really need to watch this show. My friend said it's really good. It is very realistic and real, which I appreciate it. Like, I personally can't relate to, like, what the characters are going through with each other, but, it's, like, I definitely have heard, like, stories from people or heard stories about people going through something very, very similar. But, Sally Rooney, I got beef with you about this ending. First of all, it ended so abruptly. I was like, oh and yeah i just was not expecting that ending all i gotta say is i should have known that everything was going way too well and if you read this book you know but yeah but overall i actually really like this like i know this book like people absolutely love it and people absolutely hate it i kind of fall a little bit over the middle like i didn't absolutely love it but i didn't think it was average i can definitely see both sides after reading this book why people wouldn't like this i think a very specific type of person would like this book if you're not that person then this is going to be a miss for you and it's pretty short it took me forever to read because i'm still slowly coming out of book slump but that was really good and i would recommend it so we have now reached the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the books that i read in 2022 for sure comment down below all your thoughts on the books that i read and what books you read what were your favorite books of the year what were your least favorite all of that type of stuff I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.